Hello, everybody. It is Miss Dina coming to you again live from the library. Well, you won't see me live. You'll see me recorded, but right now, <laughs> well, I am so excited to do the story time theme this week. I thought it would be fun to do horses. That's why I called it Horsing Around. So it's fun to play and think about horses. We have a lot of animals around where we live. We're really lucky. We have lots of farms, so we get to see goats and sheep and sometimes pigs. I guess there could be pigs around here. At Eight Hands Farm, they have pigs. And of course, horses too. So there's pony camps and things here during the summer. So it's really fun to talk about animals. Actually, that's the theme this summer too. But now I'm getting ahead of myself. We're just talking about horses today. But I have a really cute rhyming story for you today. It's kind of on the short side. And then we'll talk about our craft and our activity and the game that I put in your materials bags. So right now we're going to read Noni the Pony by Allison Lester. So like I said, this story rhymes. I love rhyming stories. And this pony is actually a Palomino, it looks like, because she's white and tan. Beautiful colors. Here she is. Noni the pony is friendly and funny. Her shimmering tail is the color of honey. She's beautiful. She lives on a farm at Warata Bay and likes eating apples and carrots and hay. It's like a windy day too. Her tail and her mane are blowing. Noni the pony likes trotting and prancing and the ladies next door always moo while she's dancing. Something popped up on my screen. Do you see who those ladies are? <laughs> it's funny that the author calls them ladies. They're cows. So they love the way Noni dances. She gallops and spins and canters and bucks and then kicks up her heels with the hens and the ducks. They all love to dance. Got fancy moves. Now, Noni the pony is shiny and fat. Her best friends are Dave Dog and Coco the cat. That's a funny rhyme, right? I like Dave Dog. Look at Coco the cat sitting on Noni's back. They're good friends. They ambush each other. See how fast she's running? And they play hide and seek, racing and chasing and jumping the creek. There's that long, long creek. <laughs> Doesn't look like Coco likes being chased. Coco has a scared look on her face. She's smiling a little bit. Noni the pony is gentle and kind. She never lets anyone get left behind. Look, Dave the dog is having trouble keeping up. So Noni waits with Coco. So nice, that's good friends, right? Good friends do that, wait up. This is another nice thing that friends do. If Coco and Dave feel lonely or gray, Noni tells stories to brighten their day. Look at them sitting under the tree. So nice. It's pretty hard to give Noni the pony a fright, but 
but once in a while, she gets spooked at night. Mm. Do you like the dark? Some kids don't like the dark. They sleep with a nightlight. Maybe that's what Noni needs, right? When the leaves rustle and sigh in the breeze, Noni thinks monsters are advancing and shaking the trees. There's no such thing as monsters, right? Noni just thinks that she hears something. So I wonder what she does when she gets afraid. What helps her? Ah, so at bedtime, her friends snuggle in for a song. She sings. It makes her feel better. It's fun when your friends are there. They make you feel better. And then Noni the pony sleeps tight all night long. That's so sweet. They're such good friends, Dave the dog, Coco the cat, and Noni the pony. Did you like that rhyming story? I hope you did. Noni the pony is here in the library if you want to take it out anytime soon. And now it is time to make our craft. So I gave you it's called a clothespin horse. I gave you the instructions and you can kind of see what the legs look like. It's called a clothespin horse because you use clothespins for the legs of the horse. The horse can actually stand up. I thought it was pretty fun, just like your train a couple of weeks ago. How the recycled toilet paper rolls turn into the wheels. Those turn into the legs. So I gave you two horses on, this is a thinner sheet of paper, but it, it's a little more thicker, your cardstock. Why do you think I gave you two horses? When you want the horse to stand up, you need two sides. So you can color in both sides and then glue them together so that you have the horse face on both sides and body. So when you glue them perfectly on top together, I just used a little Elmer's glue. After I colored it in, whatever color you want to color your horse, and then I just glued the blank side, put glue on the blank side, and then sandwiched them together perfectly on top of each other so that when you turn it over, you can see a horse face and mane and tail on both sides. And then it's so easy. All you have to do after that, you have crayons at home, right? I used all different colors. It doesn't even have to be brown. It could be any color you want. You can have a pink horse, that'd be fun. Also, I gave you yarn in your materials bag. So I forgot to bring it home when I made my sample last night. So I think it would look really nice if you glue yarn on the mane and on the tail, because then it gives it some texture and it really looks like, almost like it's real hair on your horse. So I thought that would be fun. So you should do that if you want to, but if you just want to color it in, that's fine too. This is your horse. So it should look exactly the way that you want it to look. But I also gave you two clothes pins. So then when you're done decorating your horse when it's exactly the way that you want it to be, you can put the legs on and then it will stand up. Oh, one of my, uh, I got a colored one on one side. That's a neat thing to do too. If you want to color in the legs with your crayons, you can do that. I picked up a, that was painted. I guess it has a purple side to it. So you can color in both sides if you want, if you want the legs to be a certain color and not just tan. But yes, when you put the legs on, it will stand up. 
Then you can play with your horse, use it as a toy, or you can just put it on your dresser, stand it up so then when your friends and family come over, they can see what you made. If you made a, an actual toy or decoration for your room that stands up. So that's your clothespin horse. Hopefully you have fun with that. And then I also gave you an activity and a game. I usually try to do something educational, something that you can learn from. So if you're practicing your alphabet, the sound matching activity is a good thing. So I gave you laminated cards, then you can cut them out and then you can match the sounds. So the horses have letters on them. This one has a B. B is for boy, big. So it makes that b, b sound. So you have to match it to the cowboy or cowgirl that has an object that starts with the letter B. So do you know what this is? This one, cowboy is holding a ball, b. B is for ball. So these two match. So you just match it with whatever the start starting letter is. So B, B, <laughs> I should do this. Maybe yeah, I won't, get, won't shake the wrong card. B is for ball. So there's lots of matches in there. Let's try another one. D, D is for, do you know what that is? D, D, D is for D, duck. D is for duck. So those two are a match because that is the first letter of duck is a D. We'll do one more. How about an E? That's kind of a hard one. But E is for elephant. And even if you're not ready to learn the beginning sounds yet, if you're still a little younger and not starting school soon, then don't worry about getting all of these at first. You can grow into this activity. You can hold on to it until you're ready to practice your letters for school. I think it would be a really good idea. So that is the present from me. Those cards and letters, you could practice your alphabet sounds. I also have some um, horseshoes in there. Those are the lowercase letters. I kind of copied those by accident along with the rest of the horses, the horse cards in here. So if you wanted to practice the capital letter and the lowercase letters and match those too. That's an even, even better activity that you can do as well with those cards. So what I did next is a game. You always think of horseshoes because horses have to wear horseshoes on their feet. I'm not sure of the reason why, but it helps them, I guess. But this is kind of the shape of a horse's foot, it's rounded. So they call it a horseshoe. So I gave you one of these, but it's brown. I co copied it for you already. And then when you cut them out, they will look like this because they're laminated and shiny. So they become your playing pieces. When you play horseshoe, you try to hook the horseshoe on a pole. That's usually on the ground, but you need to make a pole too. So that's another fun part of this craft, this game, because you have to craft first before you can play it. So I had a paper towel roll and I have a paper plate that I found around the house. So you put the paper plate upside down and then you can glue your paper towel roll to the center of it. I used hot glue because hot glue works fast, but it's something that you need to have a parent use because it gets pretty hot. It's 
called hot glue. So, because if you use regular Elmer's glue, it might take a little longer for it to work if you wanted to play this game right away. So, if you are patient and you just want to use Elmer's glue, if you don't have hot glue at home, that's fine too. That will work. Just use a lot of it. And then it will stay. And then you can put it down on the ground and try to see if you can hook, throw them, and have them land around your hole. So you have a horseshoe throw game. You can take turns with your family and see who's the best at hooking your horseshoe on the pole. So hopefully you liked all of my activity ideas and the craft and things. I'm doing another science uh, themed program for story time next week. We're going to be doing magnets. So that should be really fun. What kind of things do you think you could do with magnets? Let's see what Miss Dana comes up with next week. <laughs> All right, everybody. So nice to work with you. And I hope you enjoyed the horse sing around story time. And I will definitely see you next week. Bye, everybody.